I'm Ian Somerville and in this set of videos I'm going to be talking about critical national infrastructure and how our computer-based systems contribute to the management, to the organisation and to the support of that infrastructure. First of all, what do we mean by infrastructure? Well, infrastructure is something that underlies something else and on which something else is built. So our, our national infrastructure is that set of services and facilities on which we build our society. It's the, the whole range of things that we depend on in order to have a, an effectively functioning modern society. The kind of services we're talking about are communication services, energy services, uh, distribution services, transport networks, all of these things that, that allow us to move people and goods and energy and data around the country. On top of that, we need to have organisations, organisations that help us deliver these services. So we need government, we need medical services, we need to have financial services and so on and so forth. We can think of infrastructure as at two levels really, um, at, at, at a physical level where we have a set of physical networks, well nodes and links, which are pre predominantly concerned with moving things, moving people, moving energy, moving data. Uh, these are things which we can see and touch, we can see bridges, we can see communication towers, we can walk along roads, so on and so forth. These are the, that's the physical infrastructure in the country. Usually we think of that physical infrastructure being classed into a number of networks. These are the examples here, transport, energy, communications, data, water and waste. Building on top of these networks, we have an organisational infrastructure. The organisational infrastructure are financial services, medical services, government services, emergency services and food distribution and manufacturing services so that people can be fed, they can be governed, their health can be maintained and so on and so forth. A more recent phenomenon really since, not quite since the advent of the internet, but, but, but certainly <clears throat> in the last 30 years it has become absolutely critical is our digital infrastructure. That's our voice and data communication infrastructure that is used as a fundamental part of, all of almost all of these other services, both organisational and physical services. So our digital infrastructure are things like fibre communication links, the mobile and fixed line telephone network, data centres and services, ISPs, everything that we need in order to provide a, a wired society, a society which can communicate at all levels from the citizen level through businesses to government. Now, that's infrastructure in general. But what we're interested in here is critical infrastructure, the, 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 those aspects of the infrastructure which are essential to maintain a functioning modern society. And when we're talking about critical infrastructure, we usually talk about those assets which are essential to the delivery of the services. The assets which are part of, of critical infrastructure are tangible things. They're structures and buildings so we can see data centres or bridges. They are networks, the, the whole everything to do with rail, with road, with aviation and so on. It's the organisations that maintain and run these networks and the <coughs> computer based systems that are essential for their control. Now, when we look at our critical infrastructure, what we have within that is a, is a huge number of assets. And, and the reality is that not all of those assets are equally important. They're not all essential for the delivery of, of our critical infrastructure. And we usually think about this in terms of the, the consequences of loss. So that if we, <coughs> with our critical assets or our most critical assets are those in where if, we, if they're damaged or unavailable, they will affect the largest number of people. This picture is Heathrow Airport in London, one of the world's major airports. Millions of people use 
this, this airport every year. It's absolutely essential for the effective functioning of the aviation network in the UK. It's an, it's an absolutely critical asset. This is another UK airport. It's a small regional airport <clears throat> in, a, in a town in Scotland. Uh, that town is also served by rail and road links. If this airport was unavailable, the consequences of that would be orders of magnitude less than the consequences of Heathrow Airport being unavailable. So we wouldn't normally consider this to be a critical asset. Uh, it would be low down in the index of criticality, if you like. So we think of the assets depending on how important they are. Different countries think of critical infrastructure in different ways and they use different classifications for their critical infrastructure and for thinking about the protection of that critical infrastructure. In the UK, we use nine different classifications and we, we organise the our critical infrastructure around these classifications. The key classifications are communications, food, emergency services and energy, finance, government, medical services, transport and water. That's infrastructure, that's critical infrastructure. But what really has this got to do with software engineering? Well, the thing about our infrastructure is that it's computerised. It's uh, run by software systems. Software systems are used to plan, to organise, to manage and to control that infrastructure. And these are therefore critical software systems. We need to, they need to be dependable, they need to be reliable, they need to be available. So therefore, when we're talking about critical infrastructures now, we need to think very carefully, not just about whether bridges are cracked, whether <coughs> there are <clears throat> there is damage to a, a railway line, but also about how the, the software systems that run that infrastructure also operate. So it's a really important part of critical systems engineering to think about critical infrastructure systems and how we should be engineering and building these systems. Our national infrastructure is that set of services, energy, transport, medicine, government, etc., etc., on which our society depends and our critical infrastructure are those assets used to deliver these services whose failure would have serious consequences. We need to think about critical software systems in this context because software systems are used to manage, to plan, to organise and to control our critical infrastructure. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.